Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here at my wormery, and I'm all set to feed. I've got a tray full of yummy stuff here. It's a bunch of coffee plus the filters, and a whole bunch of pumpkin. The pumpkin actually filled up this entire tray before I put it into the microwave to defrost it. It had been in the freezer, and after it defrosted, I was able to squeeze a whole bunch of liquid into this thing, um, halfway up to the capacity of this little tray, and it seemed like the stuff was still loaded with a bunch of residual moisture still so I probably could have even squeezed out more but um, this is what we're going to be given to the worms today and the question is which worms I haven't even decided which which bin I'm going to feed actually I did but it was a toss-up and I was kind of almost at the point where I was just going to randomly point at something and say let's just feed that bin so that's what we're going to do we're going to feed that bin right there <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, that is the bin we're going to feed. It's a 132-day old Red Wiggler bin. It was a week ago today that we last fed it. And at that time, it received its 15th feeding. And the question was up for whether or not we're going to keep feeding that thing or if we're going to, at that point, just suspend future feedings, let it start foraging. And uh, the resounding, I think, feedback we got in the comments was to keep going with it. And that is kind of my preference, too. So I'm going to get that thing up onto the bench over here, and we're going to get it fed. I must say this container had a good amount of weight to it when I just picked it up off the shelf and bought it over here. The only thing that made me pause here for a moment before removing the plastic was I was um, spotting a number of little flying insects. Not too many, a couple. If I saw any more than that though I might have thought about what I have to do to get rid of them. But those couple don't seem like they're a big threat. I'm not going to sweat it. This paper looks pretty soaked. A lot of times you have worm traffic at or near the surface, either on the paper or under the paper or near the paper or under the plastic. For whatever reason, we're not seeing any worm traffic up near the surface today. I wonder why. Maybe it's got to do with the last feeding. Maybe they were having such a good time down there eating, they didn't think to come up to the surface. That plastic covering, man, was that doing a good job keeping this whole surface moist from edge to edge everywhere you look. Oh, and now I'm also noticing almost everywhere you look, not everywhere you look, but I immediately spotted a couple of these little insect larvae. I think they're moth larvae. Every time I see them, I just pull them out and squish them. That might be a little worm. don't want to take that out, but um, it does seem like these little larvae eventually crawl to the surface then I could pick them off and almost every time I come in I see them sometimes I don't think I see them because I just don't take the time to look so sometimes it does make sense just to kind of go at the whole thing a little bit more slowly so you can get a clearer view of what's going on so here too I'll just picking out this little larva but I saw this spherical object right next to <laughs> right next to it that's one of those roly polies I guess the ability for it to roll when it's in that defensive position is part of the reason it got that funny name all right I don't see any more but I don't know I always feel like I gotta pluck these things out of the bin when I see them so now at 132 days of age, I would normally not be using any fresh leaves for sure as bedding. Um, in fact, I would probably not be using any fresh bedding at all in the hopes that they would be satisfied with what, res what remains in the system as far as scraps of leftover bedding from previous feedings. So we're going to stick to that typical kind of approach of not wanting to add more bedding to the system. My thought was to kind of skim through the whole setup really quickly try to get a sense of how things are looking throughout and at the same time use that as a chance to collect up all kinds of bits and pieces of stuff these are all chunks of cardboard I already fished out of just inspecting this further corner from me it does seem like it's mainly castings but there is um, a couple lingering large chunk items in here which I think would benefit from being positioned closer to where the feedings are going to be occurring. 
And I've also found a couple of these chunks of the, um, there was another piece of it here too. The avocado pits that I slice up. So these are slices of avocado pit. I'm sure they'd break up into smaller little bits that would probably all break up a lot more easily if they were smaller. So I think we'll do that too. So besides positioning some of this leftover bedding type material that we're encountering on the way in, we'll also scoop up any large chunks of residual food that might remain in the system. But I don't need to be super thorough. This isn't some sort of like a critical step. But I do kind of like the um, idea of gradually working up to the point where you almost certainly know where almost all the large chunk materials in your bin are anymore towards the end when you're thinking it would be really nice if it was all broken down. And if you can keep kind of collecting up random things as you bump into them going through the bin, and keep, um, and keep repositioning them to the same spot you'll end up with a nice collection, maybe even a nice collection of material that you can migrate the worms with at some point when you want to just maybe grab all that stuff and position it somewhere specific in the bin where you'd like to, where you'd like to see all the worms kind of congregate at. Here and there it feels like I'm feeling like a large chunk of something. It might just be a, a leaf stem or something. Like I said, I don't have to be super thorough. I'm not really um, on an agenda here. It just seemed to me like a Kind of a good idea since I didn't plan to use any fresh bedding to see if I can collect up some um, old used bedding to go with today's feeding. I'm even questioning whether I want to keep piling in new bedding in the form of those coffee filters. Perhaps we'll just empty the coffee from them and, and set those filters aside or maybe even use them as top covering just so they don't uh, they don't kind of get caught up in the material down low. I do like the idea of trying to focus the attention of the worms. And if you've got two large chunks of um, brand new bedding that's never seen any worm action yet, it's got a long way to go before being broken down. So um, not having that there for the worms to put any energy into is probably better because then they could really focus on all this other small scrap stuff. So yeah, maybe I won't even put those filters in when we're done here. It seems like we're bumping into a couple chunks of leftovers. This would probably have to be the skin of a pumpkin. Very thin, paper thin piece of residual leftover. Seems like the meaty portion of the pumpkin was something they were able to eat pretty quickly and easily, but that little thin skin portion was going to take a little bit longer it seems. And they're going to get a whole bunch more of the same. So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind in terms of having this nice big opening here for them in the middle. You can just use that opening to feed in. This also looks like a little chunk of leftover pumpkin. Surprising to find leftovers. But not a lot, that's for sure. Well, you know, after a week, sometimes leftovers are to be expected. Pit, a slice of pit. Okay, we really kind of made ourselves a big, huge mound over there, haven't we? And we've also bumped into the cork. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm going to carefully put our collection of things that we're going to use down in the feeding area over here. Reclaimed bedding and food. But yeah, not a lot of it, right? It's hardly anything over there, as a matter of fact. But I think we're just going to follow through with what we started here is just kind of picking through this other edge of the bin if for no other reason than to at least get a sense of how things are doing over there. Might even bump into a couple chunks of large leftover material, who knows what. We'll put it right down the middle where it's going to get all the attention and all the worm traffic. Hopefully exp expediting its breakdown process. These have got to be pieces of the um, tubes, cardboard tubes that I use. All right. Well, the rest of this looks like pretty nice castings. The only thing that kind of taints it is all these leaf stems, but they'll go. 
we'll get there in time. 130 some odd days. I would think that by day 100 I would have probably withheld any further feeding, feedings with leaves used as the bedding. And as you can see, we you know, we've obviously got a lot of stuff, leaf stems, residual bits of small bedding and everything. But any, anything, you know, that was a little bit larger, we did collect up and stack it over here. And it really wasn't a whole lot, if you think about it. So we'll put that stuff right down into the feeding zone along with the fresh food that they're getting here today. And then, um, and then the question will keep coming up, you know, do we treat this as the last feeding? Do we go even further, keep going with it? Once again, I'm kind of um, cramped a little bit for room in here. But if I'm careful, I, you know, I'm able to do it without spilling stuff all over the floor. So I think we've created a big enough hole here to drop today's feeding down into. Right, so why don't we kind of layer it in. We're going to maybe grab one of these coffees. Drop all of it right down to the bottom. But then I can also grab a handful of this scrumptious pumpkin here. And sort of stir it in with the coffee, get the coffee kind of in and around those yummy food chunks. Maybe gra even grab a half of this pile of partially eaten this and that bedding and food. Try to get all that uh try to get all that coffee sort of semi blended in with its surrounding materials. Uh oh, got another little guy over here that we're gonna want to get out I think, right? <laughs> the coffee today is pretty plentiful so I've got a whole other uh container of it over here. So we'll drop in just a few more started items down into here. This is like a banana stem. <laughs> there's, you know, there's stuff all over the place. So if I'd been really careful, I would have found all kinds of other chunks like this. This is that, you know, avocado pit, sliced avocado pit. Comes apart pretty easily. And, you know, I think we even threw a few pieces of that down into here. If we encounter those, we can help them along sometimes. Just break them up too when they're encountered. So I think we could do another, maybe half. So we can perhaps use it as sort of a topping layer to sprinkle in at the end, further blend it in with the surrounding materials. I think we can pretty much use up the last of the pumpkin. You can even see right here, it's kind of leaving a little puddle behind because <laughs> there was just so much fluid pretty much pouring out of this stuff. I just couldn't resist um, capturing the liquid all the juices and they go right to use in my wormery I uh I pour it right down into the collection of pre-made bedding that I've got and it soaks up you know all those juices and all those juices become the food for all the microorganisms and bacteria and everything that I'm trying to cultivate in my pre-made bedding so that it becomes stuff that the worms can really enjoy so I think before we put the cork on as sort of the cherry on top, we can dump in the remainder of this coffee. But here too, hang on to this filter. I'd really rather have the worms working on, you know, all these residual pieces of paper like this, cardboard, whatever. If they need a carbon food source, then they can turn to these leftovers as opposed to digging into newly added fresh carbon materials. Yeah, things look pretty good over here. I guess we'll start backfilling gradually, level off the surface. Yeah, lots of leaf stems in here, that's for sure. And my thumb keeps bumping into other things, you know, like another chunk of pit, another slice of that avocado pit. Here's another piece of it. It's pretty plentiful, but I usually don't take the time to break it up like that, so I'm finding it all over the place. But you can see it breaks apart very readily. So if I do find it, I guess I could start helping it along a little. 
this bin is definitely at that point where it'd be nice to draw an end to it at some point soon but we don't have to it's certainly not a rush at 16 feedings 132 days it could pop possibly go a little bit longer i think if we wanted it to i'd love to hear everyone's thoughts do we keep going do we get into foraging here what's the next steps let me know your thoughts so those coffee filters i think yeah i'm gonna be putting those into some sort of a newer bin in another future feeding somewhere else i think here i'm going to um work more on recycling paper-based carbon carbon food sources and bedding materials and stuff like that and keeping it right where the foods are going to be too so the stuff gets broken down as quickly as possible i hope <laughs> so we'll see how that goes keep my fingers crossed all we've got left is to cover up get things cleaned up and get everything put away i'm not going to waste your time with that that's boring before i go though really quick let me just say thank you thanks so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please remember leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well all right everyone take care thanks for watching